Hi guys. I hope you're having a great Saturday. It is hot and sunny here today. It's been um, a really nice cool week. And then we get up this morning and it's going to be 30 degrees plus this afternoon. It's very humid, so very sticky and it's a great day to stay in the uh, studio where it's nice and cool and just enjoy having some fun with some paint. We're painting Oleander Tea today. This is a design I did about, uh, I don't know, maybe halfway through the pandemic in, in 2020 and taught it um, for a Zoom class. But of course, once it's on a Zoom class, you have to wait an appropriate period of time um, before you do it in, in another venue. So uh, I had a number of messages and suggestions and not so subtle hints from Miss Robin Storm that she wanted this one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that is the one that we're doing today. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. This is a fun piece to paint. Uh, I don't often do a lot of Halloween, but uh, at this time of year, I really like doing Halloween. I, and I've kind of gotten carried away in the last few days. So with the uh, skull designs, so there's several sitting on my drawing table and a couple that are already prepped and ready to paint. So be braced for that. Um, I already have our October live, one of our October live classes done. I'm excited about that. And I have next week's live class <laughs> done already and, and tape. We already shot the video for it. So uh, that will be uploaded live uh, next Saturday at 12 noon. Renee's going to load it up so that it premieres on the YouTube channel. So all you have to do is just go to the YouTube channel, click on on the, uh, the video and it's all there so it's painted step by step for you and uh, a lot of gabbing unfortunately i'm going to take a day off hopefully we're going to do some day tripping and off to the beach i need to walk on a beach i need some vitamin c d c vitamin c oh okay stay with the tour no <laughs> <laughs> you can stay home <laughs> 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 so um yeah so I've, I've kind of gotten ahead of myself and I kind of like to stay that way so I'm trying to stay at least a couple of weeks ahead um on projects so that you guys can you know have a chance to catch your breath in between and I can take a little more time off as as I choose I like having things done ahead of time so um but for today we're going to be painting oleander tea and uh, I do have some happy mail I got happy mail this week I was so excited um one of the pieces the piece that we're painting or that you guys are painting next saturday is called a uh, baking spirits bright it's this little breadboard i just loved the surface i thought it was so cute and it lends itself well to a whole bunch of different designs which i kind again i got a little carried away so um there's a bunch of designs coming up on this surface um and then i call talked to my friend Sheila at um, tollpaintingdesigns.com and asked her if she would cut me some, which she did. They disappeared so quick. So she shipped me another order. It should be, it's probably in the mailbox now. Um, if it's not, it'll be here Monday. Um, so I'm excited about that. But um, I, at the same time, talked to uh, Mario at Country Bear and he, he cut me some as well so that I just trying to keep them in stock. So we did get those yesterday. Um, so we have all of those in stock. I have them in both styles. We have the one with the the hole and we have the one without the hole. So we have some of those in stock. If you are looking for them, um, don't forget to go and check out Sheila Landry's website at tollpaintingdesigns.com. I'll tell you why. One, her surface work is beautiful. It's perfectly cut, beautifully sanded. It's ready to paint right out of the package. Um, she's also really, really creative. So um, this was in my happy mail. She sent me this. This is her new pumpkin designs. These are the ornaments. They're so cute. They're so cute. I am going to have a lot of fun with these. So uh, beautifully, what I'm ready to paint, take them out of the box, throw some paint on them. They're super well done love this great size perfect for the fall I think they'd make beautiful ornaments for the fall you could do so many fun things with them so yeah that was my happy mail from Sheila so I was excited about that so um if you're looking for that breadboard and you want to go check out some really cool new designs that she's got 
go and check out tallpaintingdesigns.com. I just love the stuff I get from her. So there's that. Um, I also got a shipment of stamps in this week. And then, of course, there was toys in it because, you know, my friend Deb. <laughs> <laughs> Deb so, being Deb. Deb being Deb. Deb sends me all the creative fun. So I got these fabulous new 6x6 six six stamps. Check this out. Snowflakes. Absolutely gorgeous. And then this one is like a bunch of grunge stuff all put together. Love that too. And then um, I've got Christmas stuff coming up. Some uh, ornaments planned for a Saturday Live. And we're going to be using some stamps to create the background. And so I wanted something festive so i got sheet music so we got a bunch of these in and they are limited that's the sad part there so um we have a very limited quantity and it's going to be really hard to get more so um the cling background music stamp and uh, the christmas cheer stamp i love this one it's a beautiful background stamp it's got lots of scripty stuff in it so we're going to be using these to create the ornaments uh, for the holidays. So I'm excited about that. So we got those on the website. What else? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm working on the autumn piece that goes with this. So we've done uh, the summer one with the lightning bugs. We did that one uh, last weekend or the weekend before. And we've already done the holiday blessings. And um, I have a fall one coming up. Uh, and then I placed an order to bring in some more of these jumbo tags because I love this surface. And I, I whoopsied. Wow. <laughs> whoopsie. I Ooh, ordered, uh, I meant to order 24, ended up ordering 124. So I have a pile of those <laughs> on the website. Um, but we're, later today, I am going to update the website. We're going to put a lot of, of uh, surfaces on sale because we have quite a few and I'm a little overstocked now. So we need to take care of that. So we'll put them on sale. In the meantime, um, some of the other surfaces, like this little one here, we've got these on sale. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff on there. This We've got a lot of stuff on the website right now. So we're happy. And we just restocked on stencils. We'll have that updated for you um, shortly. If you were looking for the Flourish stencil, that we used for the Christmas tags and uh, a few other things like the um, the autumn one coming up on Artfully Connected uh, called Pumpkin Spice Season. Uh, you need that flourish stencil for that piece and we just restocked. So we'll have that up for you later today too. And anything else? Oh, my shout out for the week. Yes. Yeah. So we decided to go offshore a little bit for the shout out uh... this week, way offshore. Intercontinental. <laughs> Intercontinental. Shout out of the week this week goes to Wildwood Art and Crafts. Uh, they're based in Australia. And uh, they are a deck art distributor down there. And they have fabulous workshops, fabulous products. They're also a Dynasty Brush distributor. There you go. Which makes me very happy. So, uh, and every single day, Wildwood shares my color of the day, shares my they're fabulous they share a lot of my stuff and i follow them because they get some really unique designs australian designers are flipping amazing so if you get a chance go and check them out their website is in the description below in the video but it's wildwoodartcrafts.com.au so go and check out their website and uh, if you're in australia they're an awesome supplier you're gonna love them so that's my shout out for today so what are we going to do? We're going what, what, to... What about Jessica? You might have noticed the banner. Happy <laughs> birthday, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica Killer is celebrating a birthday today. And as she's one of our moderators on the group page and uh, one of the moderators for this channel, we thought it appropriate to wish her a happy birthday. <laughs> so, and Miss uh, Linda Safranco uh, was awesome this morning. She posted uh, birthday greetings in the group itself. Nice. So, yeah. That was nice. So, and uh, to the members in the Create with Tracy Moreau Facebook page, which is different from my membership group, to the, those of you that follow me on the Tracy on the Create page, um, we got something special for you coming up. So watch the Facebook page. There's something coming up for you. Alrighty, I think we're ready to paint. Are, are we? I are. Mm. I don't know about you, but I are. I can't paint. <laughs> So, Oleander T. 
Finally. Finally. <laughs> that ought to make Robin happy. <laughs> so there we go. This is Oleander tea. Um, Why does it seem crooked? I don't know. Maybe the camera's crooked. No, nah, I think the camera's crooked. <laughs> yep, I think the camera's crooked. Okay. To the left or to the right? Other way. <laughs> there you go. No, no, that's no, even more crooked. There, okay. Perfect. Okay. Nailed it. Yeah, it is way off. <laughs> it's not level. So this is Oleander tea. This is a, an older design. As I said, I painted this in mid uh, twenty twenty. I think twenty twenty one. Say something like nineteen hundreds. Oh, it's just you know. In that's the mid nineteen hundreds, I painted this. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a fun piece it has a few simple elements um but i think what catches people's attention is the the flames in the background and it's actually really fun to do uh but it's super simple uh, the rest of the piece is just is basic decorative painting um but it is really a lot of fun to paint i love this piece i i'm a fan so oleander is a plant that commonly grows in the southern part of the U.S. and in some places in in Europe, uh, but it's highly toxic. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just checking. I don't pinch something. Oh, gotcha. So. That is what we are going to paint today. This is fun. It's a simple pattern, a simple palette too. So I've done a little bit of prep work so that we're not here for six months trying to base coat this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I do not have uh, any access to the chat today. So Renee's going to keep me busy. And I forgot to print off my pattern. So warm white is our color. We're going to start with our teacup down here. I love Matik. So I'm using a little bit of warm white. We're going to stencil 1 8 polka dot onto our teacup. I'm going to arrange this so the dots all fall inside. I love, and you might have noticed that I use this 1 8 a lot, especially for uh, these teacups. I don't know why, it's just a thing. <laughs> So I'm going to use my Stencil Pro and some warm white. The brush should be almost dry, almost, but not quite. And I'm taking a little care so that I don't get polka dots everywhere. We want them on the cup, but we don't want them all over the, the outside or onto our potion bottle. There we go. Oh, you so, didn't talk about the giveaways today. I did not. The giveaways today are from Tombow. And we have a set of double-ended. That's the, the dual uh, markers. I love them. i got to show you this. You got them? Oh, they're the watercolor ones? These are the watercolor ones. I love, love, love. These ones have a dual end. This is a water-based marker so they have a brush tip so you can you can do lettering with them you do all sorts of fun things with them and then they also have a nice fine tip for detailing they are water soluble so that you could you know, draw or do whatever you want to do on watercolor paper and then take a water brush and create some just beautiful watercolor effects with them these are absolutely fabulous to have they come in wonderful uh, 10 brush sets and they retail around $30 for 10 of them. They're, but they're worth every penny. The pigmentation, the color, uh, the functionality of them is spectacular. I'm a big fan of these. I love these markers. So we have a set of these, 10 colors, and I believe it's in the bolds. So the nice, bright, bold, vibrant colors. We set of those to give away. And then we have two drawing sets. So we have the professional pencils and erasers and a bunch of fun stuff in there from Tombow. So those are all in those prize packs this week. <laughs> Love it. 
And I love my new organizer for those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's You're missing a few. Just a few. There's a few colors that I One, two, do not three, have, and they're currently four, out of stock. Five colors. Yeah, I'm only missing five out of, what, a hundred and something? Six. Six. There's a red missing. Yeah. All uh, currently out of stock. Uh, of course. Otherwise, I'd have them full. Okay. So, I have poker dots on my teacup. I'm going to check this just to make sure everything is where it should be. Oh, yeah, baby. I do have to touch up my skull and crossbones because I got polka dots on. <laughs> got polka dots on my skull and crossbones, but that's okay. It's an just easy paint. fix. It's just, just paint. It's just exactly. paint. Exactly. So, I'm going to, a couple of things I'm going to touch up while I'm sitting here. I want this tag to be quite opaque. So, I'm just using a little bit of warm white to clean it up. <laughs> The only good thing about turning 65 is old age, pen old age pension. <laughs> okay, where'd that come from? I don't know. Oh, was that Jessica? <laughs> no, uh, Jessica's not 65. Wow. Don't do that. <laughs> I, I was going to say, there's no way Jessica's 65. <laughs> no, that was uh, Charlotte Downey. Oh, Charlotte. Well, I'm I'm turning 60 in January. Some days I feel it. Other days I don't. Today I don't. Today I feel 60. He feels 60. I don't. Renee hurt his back the other day. Yeah. So he's... My puppy hurt my back. Your puppy hurt your back. So. His dog with the bad back. <laughs> <laughs> my dog with the bad back hurt my back. Yeah. She doesn't like to suffer alone. Nope. Apparently not. <laughs> And then she went and had a bath today. Yeah. And chose chose she, her birthday gift, which she's not touching right now. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Miss Dot turned six. Yeah. The day she pulled my back. Yeah. <laughs> her birthday, I got hurt. Yeah. So I'm just, I want this tag to have nice shape. And I wanted a few more wanted to solidify some of those details in there. So a second coat of warm white was called for. That looks good. And I'm going to do the same thing to the skull. I want to get a nice opaque white on the skull. <laughs> I turned 60 in May this year. But I'm still 20 in my mind. I know. What's up with that? Our bodies are 60 and our brains are 12. Mine is sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I don't like the elements in this piece. I know, I have a th an obsession with teacups, I guess. There's just no other explanation for it. Um, and a couple of people messaged me the other day... Um, um, a couple of people have been sending me pictures. They've been finishing up the teapot series and the teacups. Oh, yeah? <laughs> One lovely lady sends me a photograph of, of all of her teapots and her teacups hanging on the wall. <laughs> and there's one missing. <laughs> and the reason it's missing is I haven't done the teapot for it yet. So Oh, you got to so, complete the set. Well, I have the drawings done. I just have to sit down and paint it. Yeah. Um, it's the teapot for the pansies. Oh, you haven't done pansies? I haven't done the pansies yet. Oh. So that one will be our next teapot, probably in a few weeks. You sure you haven't done the pansies? No, I haven't done pansies. Wild rose, daisies. Sweet peas. Sweet peas. But I haven't done the pansies yet. I don't see the pansy one anywhere. It's right there. Second row, just to the left of the give thanks. Right underneath the... Uh, oh. <laughs> Hello. Oh, I thought that was a sweet pea one. Sorry. No. I don't know my flowers. The sweet pea one is down on the bottom. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to do a teapot for that one. I have to do a teapot for that. Gotcha. So, okay. <laughs> my body's writing checks my mind can't cast. <laughs> Feel you on that one. Maybe sometimes it's the other way around. 
<laughs> Some days I treat my body like a temple, mm -hmm. but most of the time it ends up being treated like an amusement park. <laughs> So let's talk about the base coats on this piece. Now I've used vintage pink, I think. Could be cactus flower. Um, either way, I've got the wrong color on there. I think. Yep. I haven't got my instructions, so I can't remember. Always a guaranteed fun time when painting with Tracy. Yeah, well, it's always an adventure, that's for sure. Temple of Doom? Okay. <laughs> okay, so vintage pink. It's either vintage pink or cactus flower. I cannot, for the life of me, remember which. And I could be wrong about both, but... I've got the wrong color on there, but I needed something opaque to cover this well, so... Okay, so I'm using cactus flower, and I still think that that might be too light, but yeah, it is. There we go. So I've got cactus flower in here. It needs to be a little bit brighter than what I have. Oh, that's a question a little outside of what we're doing. What's that? Uh, she's wondering what would be a good suggestion for sealing a stone, sealing mm -hmm. a stone statue that's going to be outside. Um, there's a couple of good things that you can use. Deckwort's got some really great uh, patio paint, but they also have a really nice outdoor decoupage, and it's essentially an exterior sealer. So the um, outdoor decoupage or decoupage outdoor, depending, I can't remember how they label it. Do you have some? Um, I think I do, yes. Just a minute. Of course it's in that cupboard. Of course, i got to move everything <laughs> to get at it. That's and, oh, Sheila Landry got the new colors this week. Yes, she did. I bet she's already going to town on that. Oh, she's probably already created a half dozen things. I have been privy to her latest creations. Ah. And um, I'm so excited. I can't wait till she releases them because they're going to be amazing. She's using them in her new designs. Oh, her new ones are so stinking oh, cute. Oh, you do have a bottle. Of course I do. So, this is what you're looking for. This is Decoupage Outdoor. It's an exterior sealer. And whenever you're sealing something that's going outside, you have to seal everything. All of it. All of it. Yeah, so, if it's like a terracotta pot, make sure you seal the inside, the outside, the bottom of it, and inside that little drainage hole. Mm. Because if moisture can get in to the material that you're painting over, then it'll get behind the paint and it'll peel off. So, my recommendation, I love this stuff. Decoart Outdoor. It's for exteriors. It's fan friggin tastic. <laughs> I had to dig. I had piled... <laughs> I had canvas piled in front of the cabinet, so I couldn't get in there. So I had to go <laughs> digging. I've been trying to um, purge the studio a little bit every day this week. So I've been going through drawers and cabinets. and. Jeez, Sandy. <laughs> She's up there with the links. She's up there with the links and the, the discount code. Excellent. Go, use them. I yeah. believe it's 20% off. Yeah, Deckwork gave me a one-time discount code for 20% off. I think that's the one that Sandy has posted on there. Yeah. So um, if you're shopping for or need any Deckwork products or the new colors, um, make sure you put that in there. It'll give you 20% off your whole order. So. And it's one-time use And to it's the a one-time use. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's linked to the address. Yeah. So. You can only use it once. Not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. No. But it's 20%. I mean, yeah, that's a, a chunk. That's a chunk. That's essentially your shipping costs. Yep. You know, and in this day and age, every little bit counts. So that's my view. Does the ceiling also apply to using patio paints and multi-surface satin paints? 
Um, patio paint itself does not need to be sealed. Neither does the multi-surface satins. No. But making sure that you cover the entirety of the... Uh, yeah. If yeah. you're going to seal it, then make sure. If it's something that you don't want to seal, the, if you don't have to paint the patio, make sure you seal any raw material that's still sitting there. Oh. What is that? Thank you, Carrie. Carrie. Ma uh, Lizana? Carrie Lizana? Carrie Lizana with $10. For, for the, the puppers. puppers. Yay. And the message was for the puppers. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be Dot's birthday present. We'll be sending a note. Yeah. Be nice to see at the end of the month. July was a really great month. Every, everybody was so generous. Yes. Yes, they were. So. It was so close to. Almost what? $300. Almost $300. Yeah. And some toys. And some toys. So. Raffin. Yeah. Thank you, Raffin. He remembered. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike last weekend. Unlike last week again. Had the right dog in his mind, wrong name. Yeah, had the right dog in my <laughs> mind, wrong name. <laughs> and uh, depending on how I feel tomorrow and weather permitting, yeah. uh, Dot's going to get her, the other half of her birthday, yeah. which is walking downtown. Yeah, amongst all the peoples. Amongst all the peoples. Dot loves peoples. Decord does not ship to Canada right now. No, they do not. Sad face. However, <laughs> having said that, if you live in Canada and you are looking for decor products, um, stockade.ca is an excellent resource. Um, they're based in Ontario. And Country Bear Wood is based in Sherbrooke, Quebec. Also an excellent resource. Both are decor distributors. So they carry a nice range of products. Country Bear carries everything. So I've got... Um, I used a little bit of cactus flower in there. Something tells me it's not the right color. But offhand, I don't have my uh, printed pattern. I'll have to see if I can't pull it up, though. Got Lemmy into training. Oh, Lemmy. That's Jail's <laughs> pup. <laughs> Much needed. He's pretty good at home, but can't take him out in public. <laughs> Got ne it. Needs leash time. <laughs> yep. Needs leash time. Gotta That's practice all. in your living room. Uh, one of our neighbors was out the other day with the, with their pup, that little gray, little blue nose. Oh, well, yeah. he's not so little anymore. No, but, no, 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 no. But um, he's very robotic. <laughs> He's just, <laughs> he is adorable though. Yes. Okay, I'm trying to locate my pattern because for the life of me, I can't, I'm looking at the color on the surface. I know that's not the right color. Uh-oh. <laughs> and it's driving me crazy. So I have to go find my pattern. I have too many patterns and I can't remember the colors all the time, so. But I have a feeling I got this one. I missed by a mile on this one. Let's find out. Well, I did miss, but not by much. It is vintage pink. <laughs> the one you painted over? The, the one I just painted over, yes, of course it is. <laughs> Yeah, Sheila was trying to help you out here. Yep. The first color was the one you put in the instructions, the one you just <laughs> painted over. <laughs> Sheila's yep. on the ball today. I am not, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sheila. It's been a week. <laughs> um, was it Thursday? I think it was Thursday. Um, I posted a bunch of stuff and a couple of new designs, blah, 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 blah. And then I started getting messages that nobody could access my website. So I went to have a look at my website and it couldn't, I couldn't access it. I could still get into uh, my dashboard and, and whatnot, but uh, yeah. I couldn't access the website. No, I was just wondering what that was. 
Oh, it's asking me if I'd like to insert an ad. Oh, right okay. Now. No. <laughs> so I um, I had to contact my service provider, and it turned out that my server crashed. <laughs> oh no! So um, I told the tech that I was talking to that you know um, I've got customers messaging me that they can't access my site, and he said, "Well, it is down. It's a known problem. They're working on it, and it'll it could be a few hours before it's okay." Um, up and running and then 10 minutes later my website goes <laughs> it's like wow they were fast okay reynolds uh you we weren't having a live today no that's next weekend next weekend next weekend there's no live but we do have a video for you yes so there's no live but we do have a video so your shading color um for this part for this lovely piece this watermelon slice i don't know if I have that color. Uh, can you tell me where the floating video? Where to find the floating video? Oh, it's on the... Uh... It's on YouTube. Yep. Um, I don't remember which... You covered floating multiple times. Uh, the floating video that they're talking about is on the, the group page. But I can share that to the regular page. You want me to put it on YouTube? Uh, I can, yeah, just not right at the moment. Okay. Okay, I don't have watermelon slice. No watermelon slice. No. So now i got to find another color. You sure it's not over here? No, it's wild berry. That'll work. <laughs> <laughs> watermelon sure. slice is one of those colors that was discontinued. Oh, yeah? And then um, they changed their mind. And, of course... It's not a color that I used often. So when they discontinued it, I just took it out of my, my lineup. Because if it's not in the catalog, then I don't use it. But they changed their mind, and now I don't have any. <laughs> so I'm going to have to go with Wild Berry. So this is my substitution, is this Wild Berry. Pretty tone, a little pinker, I think. So... On this edge, there's some flip overs that are going on this. So I'm just going to float that color in under that turnover. Bear with me. I'm going to zoom in a bit here. There we go. I'm going to grab my. There we go. Make it work, Tracy. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just paint, right? We can make it work. I'm not worried. People revolted when they discontinued it. Well, there, you know, it's, we become very accustomed to using certain colors. Um, but having worked in this industry as long as I have, and having worked with Decord as long as I have, which, by the way, is 22, 23 years this year. Jeez. That's how long I've been working with Decord. Um, so. You get a pension? No, I don't get a pension. <laughs> Is it pensionable time, though? No. No? Institutional time sometimes. But... Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but as long as I've been doing this, the one thing I've always understood is their reasoning behind having to eliminate colors. And a lot of it, um, as comfortable as we get with certain colors, it's not always a business decision. I will say that. Sometimes it's quite simply that certain colors age out so you know they age out and then three years later suddenly they're popular again or tones similar to them are popular again so mm -hmm. sometimes all you have to do is wait and a color will return into favor but um a lot of the time these colors are discontinued because quite honestly they don't sell enough of them to warrant keeping them in the the production lineup so you've been with Decorate since 99? Yeah. I joined, uh, I started working with Decorate doing product demonstrations oh. um, at trade shows. That's right, too. I worked for, did them for True Value Hardware and True Serve and uh, their Crafts and More stores. So, yeah, I've been working with Decorate products a very long time.
So I know a few things, <laughs> you know, about their products and I knows a few things. And I love their products. I always have. Uh, Tracy, I know you put out a Halloween pin skull. I did. Yes. We put a little sugar skull yeah. pin out. However, will there be an Xmas pin? Yes. There's always Xmas pins. <laughs> <laughs> The little sugar skull pin, I love that one. Of course, it's a skull. Um, but yes. Oh, Sheila was with Decorate since '97. Yeah. Wow. Sheila has been in this industry a long time. There. Pacifica, California. Hmm. Wonder where that is. I don't know. Is that close to San Diego? It, it actually, I think it's up further. Like, yeah. I bet you it's on the PCH, somewhere along the PCH. Yeah. So, I think we're getting there. Slowly but surely. I so hear puppy prints. You do. So, I love these flowers. I just think they're so pretty. But they're super easy to paint. This is not a difficult piece to paint. Look at that. So, I have... <laughs> <laughs> because I've, you know, changed the colors. <laughs> That's why I put color swatches sheets in my patterns. Uh close works like horseshoes and hand grenades and now deco art yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay close works yep close works so i'm taking that base color <laughs> the one that i had right the first time and i'm using that to paint in those flip overs because those flip overs are opposite right next to that um shading that we just did that gives us our highlight Comes up. Super easy. <laughs> Lori C says she's only been painting for six years. I have learned not to freak out when I don't have a color the pattern calls for. Slowly Absolutely. learning to substitute. It's yep. freeing. It is. When the minute you start stop worrying about whether or not you have the exact color. I mean you may have to make the odd change, but really there's no need to have the exact color, especially in this day and age when we have and there's so many values of a similar color or something that's very, very close. And this one is so flippin' close. Oh, dead's alive. Uh oh. You know. She's caffeinated. She can people. She can people now? Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Seeing as Deb is alive and awake, we gotta. I'm gonna tell you this. Jeb just got a shipment of new stamps in. <laughs> Go to paintingwithdeb.com. Go and check out Deb's website. Um, or .ca. Uh, Deb.com. Paintingwithdeb.com. And I happen to know that she's got a bunch of um, really adorable kits on her site that uses stamps. Flipping amazing, and she's got some great new patterns. So go check that out. <laughs> and Miss Sandy, my lovely Miss Sandy, um, she's got um, quite a selection of the Dynasty brushes on her site. If you are looking for stencil brushes, if you are looking for those uh, IPC brushes, the uh, point blenders and the flat top mops and whatnot, go and check her site out too. She's got those. And um, and then my favorite toy, I don't know if she still has some in stock, but you got to get one of these. They're awesome. <laughs> Love mine. I would not go that far, <laughs> says Deb. Not yeah. quite alive, not ready for people. Well, she's alive. She's awake. She's vertical. That doesn't mean she's ready to people. Yeah. Like the other day, I didn't want to people. <laughs> 
Well, Thursday, I didn't want to people. I know. Okay, I'm not happy with that pink. No? No, I need it to be lighter. Hello. There we go. So, I just put a touch of warm white in it. Somebody's got a tornado warning? Yeah, there's places in the southern parts of the U.S. there that are bracing themselves for some nasty weather. Jeez. Deb is ready for puppy. Oh, it's puppy time. Dogs are much better than people. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Most of the time, dogs communicate better than people. <laughs> da, da, da. So I'm not, as you can see, this is not a hyper-realistic flower. It's just, just fun. But I do like to have some of those details in. Those little flip-overs, etc. Those are important. Here comes the sun. Mm -hmm. oh, what? Why did that pop into my head? I have no idea. So the leaves in the background for this um, are faced with matcha green, I believe. Yup. I do like those little turnovers. People chatting up a storm today. Yeah. We got everything from tornado warnings to talking about coffee to <laughs> uh, puppy talk. I'm dog sitting for five days. So you have five dogs in your house right now? Your baby. So you got two dogs of your own and you're babysitting three of your friends you're a good friend no kidding five dogs that's a pack that's a pack of dogs <laughs> yep okay so these flowers I think are probably the, the busiest work you're going to do in this piece it's not this is not a difficult pattern to paint by any stretch and I love that these flowers are just kind of wonky <laughs> they're fun but I do want to make sure that these little flip overs have got great color and there's a couple of little things that we need to touch up a bit there we go okay I'm happy Four dogs. What? Uh -huh. I'm confused. So in these leaves in the background, we're going to use a little bit of plantation pine to shade those. And I'm going to use that 3 8 angled shader. Today I'm using a black gold. Now, as I said, the base color for this is matcha green and I'm going to thin out some plantation pine I don't want it full strength and we're going to put a few little shadows in now this leaf here is in behind the one in front we want to separate those leaves a little bit this is the reason I'm using the black gold is because it, it, these have a really fine point on them and I want a fairly sharp. I want to be able to get close to that edge without getting color all over everything. And that's one of the benefits to that sharp chisel edge on those black gold is that they do cut in quite nicely and 
you can deepen those shadows whenever you choose. And it's super simple. We're not talking about any heavy detail. We're just getting some nice shadows in there. Love this color. Love plantation pine. I have been absolutely obsessed, obsessed with the um, the new green that's in the decor lineup, which is that lush green. I mean, I use um, antique green a great deal, and I have not touched my bottle of antique green in a while because I've been using that lush green for everything. And the other color I've been using a lot, surprisingly, is this one, that purple iris. I've been using this one in place of Diox Purple for a couple of reasons. One, I love the transparency of this one. It's just beautifully transparent and it's quite rich. It's a nice purple. It's a really nice purple, especially for shading purples. So I've got on that one. To check my list again. Um, I used purple petal for this. It's very pretty, this purple petal. Um, but shaded with that purple iris, it's gorgeous. So I'm not super thrilled with how I base coated this. I must have been half asleep when I did this. Because not only did I get the color right and then thought it was wrong but I've got too much of a gap here so and it's not a very clean base coat this is one of the issues about painting this on canvas is that tooth the texture of the canvas um, when paint dries sometimes it leaves you with a not so pretty edge like that one was so quick coat just to clean this up and clean up any edges that need to be cleaned up. I often say neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. That doesn't mean poorly painted. It just means that don't beat yourself up over things that you can't control. So. And just relax and paint. So, but I wanted a clean edge. There we are. That's better. Just wasn't looking all that great. So I'm break up my little toy here and dry that really quick. And then we're going to shade uh, the teacup with that purple iris. If you don't have purple iris, use the diox. But I love this purple iris. Um, it's quite dark, um, just not as dark as the Diox. So you can see those lines. We're creating sort of a rippled edge to this teacup. So put a float in there, in that ridge. Such a pretty purple. And then under... And then we're going to put another shading on the other side of that. And that's going to create sort of that rounded appearance. And this becomes a back-to-back -back float. There we go. Thing to this saucer. So we get that dark purple. And there we go. So let's come over to this tag. Uh, I'm going to grab a little bit of lamp black. And I've got polka dots in my skull. I don't want polka dots in my skull. So I'm going to put a little bit of lamp black in here and touch up my skull a little bit because I want them to be nicely defined in there. What's going on with YouTube? So I fixed up my skull. Yeah, it's it's a connection issue. 
we need a little bit of asphaltum. Now, my favorite part of this piece is that we get to use all those neons. <laughs> so we're going to be playing with neons today, too. So I've got some asphaltum on my palette. We're going to age this tag a little bit. And we're going to use a little bit of asphaltum. Blend it out really well on your palette so that it's not full strength. We don't want to make a you know solid brown mark on the bottom of our tag and I want this to have an aged appearance. So I'm putting a float of the asphaltum along the bottom and along the edges and it's as I said I blended this out well so it's not full strength. I don't want it to be a solid brown. love it. So now we've got a nice aged look on our tag and while I have this brush loaded we're going to come up and shade our skull. So at the indentation at the temple of our skull I'm going to use a little float of asphaltum. And that's all these little details here is what gives this skull a little bit of dimension. It's a little indentation under the nose and at the brow line right there. I'm just using the heel of the brush to blend out the edges of that float. And don't forget we've got a little shadow under the eye like so. I do like that, just that little, little float underneath the eye, just sets the eyeball back a little bit, the eye socket, I should say. And then we're going to take that float around the side of the skull, about to the midway point. I'm just going to let it run out about the midway point. And on this side, you're going to come up about a third of the way. Love it. See how easy that was to do that skull? It comes together really quickly. I say what? What? Do you want to opt in for that? Okay. <laughs> so YouTube, as of yesterday, yeah. just released the ability for your viewers uh -huh. to gift memberships to other viewers. Oh, cool. So that's a neat idea. That means somebody in our membership program can gift, pay a one month subscription for somebody who doesn't have a subscription to your membership. Oh, cool. <laughs> that's neat. <laughs> what a great idea. So the ability is there. Neat. I'm trying to figure out how to opt our channel into it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there should be a little present icon pop up in the live chat where you can gift a membership to somebody within the chat. Neat. Or you can just do a bulk membership. So 10 random people can get them. Oh, wow. Well. And the person can pay for. Neat. And it's a one-time thing. Just to let you know, it's a one-time thing. It will not be a reoccurring monthly payment. Oh, wow. So you could literally, you know, they could try it for a month, and if they liked it, they could stay with it. Yeah, and th and if they want to stay with it, they have to put in their information. Oh, cool. So basically somebody is buying a, a trial for you. <laughs> the idea. Huh. Didn't know that was an option. It, well, it started yesterday. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an option now. It's an option now. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to start giving this teacup some real shape. And we're going to do that. I'm using my point blender. And 
and you're going to pick up a little bit of warm white. You don't want a ton of paint on this brush and you're going to blend it out well on the palette so that that brush is almost dry. And we're going to start with a light highlight and it's going to go the length of that space. And on the center panel, it's going to come almost to the tag, but then you're going to work that highlight to about the halfway mark. There. And then on this side, that highlight is going to come about the halfway mark. Remember the tag is in the way. And this one is going to come about two thirds of the way down. So there is your first highlight on the cup and you're going to do the same thing on the handle but this one you're going to take a little bit of care with because it's not a very big space and I'm just highlighting the shape of the handle just like that and I'm going to find my smaller I'm going to switch to a mezzaluna because I'm I can't find my smaller point wonder. It could be amongst the pile that I have set aside for cleaning. It looks that way. Oh no, there it is. Yay. I found it. <laughs> So I just, I went to get my smaller point blender. There we go. Okay. So I'm using, this is the small point blender. Now we're going to put another highlight right over the first one, but it's only going to come about halfway down the first one. And I'm sticking, you notice I'm sticking close to the left side of that element. So halfway down. And again here, but not quite all the way to the tag and then about halfway across that first one. Same here. This one is going to be about halfway down that first. And then the same here. And then if your brush is too dry, reload it. And we're going to come over here to the handle and sticking to the outside edge, I'm going to put a brighter highlight and it's going to come short of that first one. So it's not coming all the way down. There we go. And we're going to do this one more time. Again, a tiny amount of paint burnish that brush out on your palette and you're going to come to that same spot and it's going to be about halfway down that last highlight. So we just want what looks like an, a light impact point. There's our light impact up on that handle and we have a little light impact down here. Look at that. So now we've got a highlight. Come down here to the saucer and we're going to put a little bit right there in the center of that saucer. They would, they would like to see a close-up of that brush. Okay. It's pretty. It is pretty. <laughs> I love these brushes. The, the IPC Point Wonders are fantastic for dry brushing and I love that they come to that point because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rinse these out and then I'm going to show you a really neat trick with these point blenders that you're going to love because they're so fun. So that teacup, we now have to put in some final highlights. And we're going to do that with a little bit of thin warm white. And I'm going to use a rigger for this. You can use a liner if you want to. But we're going to put a little line like so on that highlight.
and I'm going to put a dot just above that line. Just a little one. That's a light impact point. And I'm going to do the same thing on the handle. Remember, I'm keeping it to the outside edge. So now we have, boom, highlights. Oh, okay. So it, it hasn't gone live yet. They're still doing testing with, you know, the much larger streamers right now. Okay. Um, however, when it does go live, you'll it'll be available to our channel. Cool. So we meet the criteria. We do meet the criteria. Okay. YouTube is offering this new feature to a set number of streamers at a time. But rest assured, when it does go live, uh, your channel will be cool. amongst the ones that it'll be available to. Streamlabs will also have your alerts ready for you. Oh, right on. Oh, right on. Well, thank you, Cassandra. By the way, that's our YouTube rep. <laughs> okay. Her name's Cassandra. That's in our YouTube notifications. Mm -hmm. So we're all good. So I'm just using a little bit of thinned warm white to outline my teacup. I do like this little bit of white at the edges. It just makes this pop. Acts as a little bit of a light, uh, highlight. Now, one of the things that some people struggle with is putting a straight line for a highlight on something like this. I'm going to show you a little trick. I'm going to use my steel edge ruler and my white gel pen. So I had a bit of news in reference to these Uniball Signo pens, the ones that I absolutely love. I love my Signo pens. I have been, one, having a really hard time getting them um, in quantities. I can buy them one at a time, but um, when you do that, they're a little on the pricey side. So I went to order some because I'm getting low on a bunch and the price of them had nearly doubled. And it's almost entirely due to shipping costs. So, I have been looking for you know, a comparable quality that I can get for you guys at a better price because I'm sorry, but $8 for a single pen, I think is a bit much. Um, so I have been looking. I do, however, um, had some good news yesterday. I found a supplier based in Korea. These ones are Japanese. I found a supplier based in Korea and um, so I ordered some pens to try them. So I'm going to test some out, but um, I'm wondering if any of you would be interested in testing them for me. So I'm going to test them, but I'd also like to get your opinion about them. So I'm going to, um, if you message me, that you're willing to try them, I will be happy to send you one free of charge so that you can try them out because I would re really like to have your opinion. Because I think it's important to get something that works. It has to work. Um, I know what's going to work for me, but that's not always, you know, the, the primary reason behind it. So there we go. So I just used my white gel pen, outline my teacup so it's nice and bright. I like it. I'm going to dry this real quick. And then we're going to shade that teacup. Just a little. And we're going to use a little bit of lamp black. So. And it's just to define the shape of this. That's the only reason we're doing this. It's not to make any drastic changes to it. But I want to cha shade into there. And I also want to shade underneath this tag to give it a little more 
elevation. So just a weak float, doesn't have to be much, but that little bit of lamp black makes a world of difference. Changes the profile of things. People are having power outages throughout the yeah. southern states right now. Well, they've got a bunch of storms going their way, so. So there we go. Our teacup is done. It is super easy. <laughs> Honest to Pete, I dropped my brush, landed right in the paint. You're just having a day today, aren't you? I are. <laughs> so we're going to come over here to the, the potion bottle. I love this piece. So I used, tells you how on the ball I've been this week, my favorite deck work color of all time. And no, it's not Ashfaltum. It's Bahama Blue. I love Bahama Blue. It is my favorite color. Next to Ashfaltum and Warm White, I think that's the color I use the most often. But, um... Bahama Blue. Favorite Americana color. I happen to know that it's Sandy's favorite Americana color, too. How do I know this? Um, when Sandy and I became um, brand ambassadors for Decor, they issue us our own Decor business cards. Right? Because we are representatives of Decor. And what they asked us was, what's your favorite Americana color? And... That is the color on the back of our business card with the color number and the whole thing. So it was funny because when Sandy and I went to a trade show and we were looking at each other's business cards, they're identical. <laughs> so, and we laugh about it all the time. The two of us are frighteningly similar in a great many ways. So I've got a little bit of Bahama Blue, but I want to show you something. So this is me. I reached into my little cart next to me, which usually has all of my favorite colors in it. Bahama Blue. Bahama Blue. And um, I just started painting. It wasn't Bahama Blue. It was this one. This is Crystal Blue. Hmm. It's very close. It's about a value lighter. And it's a little more blue, a little less green. And it wasn't until I got it on the black that I went, I don't think that's right. <laughs> 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 and although the difference is negligible, look at this. On black, it changes drastically when you're putting it on a black background. The crystal blue does not cover nearly as well. It's a lovely color. It's not as opaque. But it's not quite as opaque as the Bahama blue. And it just, it's just missing something. And it was funny that I was sitting there looking at it going, why does that not look right? <laughs> and there's yet yeah, they're so close together, but it just didn't look right. So I'm putting a coat of Bahama blue over top of the crystal blue because it just didn't look right to me. I knew what I wanted and it just wasn't quite there, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Robin Storm. Too bad there's no dibs today. <laughs> no, there is no dibs on Saturdays. The dibs is reserved for our membership group and on the Tuesday night classes. <laughs> I think I got to come up with like a dibs emoji. Yep. <laughs> I think you do. For the members. <laughs> yep. I think it's funny. There was a whole conversation going on on Facebook about dibs. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. So it's funny to me that now that this is drying, I can really see the difference between those two colors. I think it's hilarious. But yeah. The and picture is on a repeating loop. I have no control over that. What? Apparently on Facebook, it's just. Oh, looping. really? And. That's Facebook. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. How about mine, 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 mine? <laughs> yeah, I gotta come up with an emoji. <laughs> Create an emoji. Bye. 
Can we do dibs on past projects? <laughs> on the group night? No. <laughs> it's dibs on the current project. <laughs> the one that's being painted. They're funny. Can't for the life of me figure out why they would want them half the time, but I don't... Well, it's not a bad thing for you. Well, it just sort of... I don't Looking know. at the walls down here. Yeah. <laughs> running out of yeah, space. <laughs> I have run out of space. Never not. Never mind running out of. I have run out of space. Fay Reed. Um, so the, I'm trying. <laughs> Faye Reed said she wants to come for coffee or tea. Um, the next time she's in Fredericton, so. Doors open. Doors open anytime. <laughs> I may not be here. <laughs> He'll be working. I'll either be working or out walking the dog. Or hospitalized based on how my back feels. <laughs> so we're going to work on our uh, bottle down here. I'm going to make sure that... See, I can really tell the difference between those two colors right now. Between the crystal blue and the... Yeah, I can really see it. When it dries... It's. Does Tracy take bribes? <laughs> <laughs> bribes. Actually, I have to put. I, there's. I've got so much stuff down here. It's ridiculous. So I'm, we're going to be putting some of the, uh, some more originals back up on the website because it's, getting to the point where Did there's you just sell out on the originals. Yeah, there's quite a few of them sold. Oh, right on. It's just. Got it. Yeah, there's just too many of them in here. It's crazy. I still think you should make a pile for a charity live. Yeah. I'd love to do that. If we can get a charity to go, hey, yeah, we're interested. Well, you know what? <laughs> I think we should just do it and then send everything to this, to the shelter. Fair enough. Just do it and send it. Because we, we tried contacting, what, two or three agencies and then never bothered to get back in touch with us, so. Yeah. so you don't want money? Okay. <laughs> and a pile our, for the puppers? A pile for the puppers. I have been purging all week because we have the village yard sale comes up every year. Ah, yes. And our village yard sale is on the 10th of September this year. And... Um, I usually take it as an opportunity to clear out stuff that I'm not using, um, that I've accumulated over the years. And let me tell you, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. Renee can testify to that. Um, but yep. the one thing I have accumulated incredibly in the last two years is finished pieces. And I didn't really think about it because I always see what's on the walls and I kind of, that's where my brain goes. But... Um, <laughs> I have those little storage boxes in the back and the shelf and I emptied one storage shelf the other day Jeez. and I had 135 finished pieces from that one shelf and there's still three or four in there that I have to go through. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> Ornaments, boxes, little signs, welcome signs, welcome home, canvas pieces. It's ridiculous how much is back there. I should get you a YouTube business card. <laughs> Just a business card with your YouTube channel on it. Yeah. And then when they do the uh, the village garage sale, you just put up a bunch of original pieces and put your business <laughs> card in front of it. <laughs> Five bucks, it's yours. Yeah. Oh, it's just, there's so much of it, though. It's ridiculous. Eyeballs. We have eyeballs. So matcha green is the color of that liquid back there. I do like matcha green for this. It's nicely opaque, so it covers reasonably well. But the one thing I noticed is that even though I've got two coats on there, I'm still seeing a lot of black. You should do a live sale on Facebook. Is that a thing? It is a thing. I've watched Cupboard Distributing do that. I don't, I'd have to figure out how to work that, but... That'd be fun. <laughs> you have so many finished pieces. Mine, mine, mine should work. 
Oh my. <laughs> Should do a live sale on Facebook. I'm curious how did that how does that work? I am not sure. But you see a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. See them on TikTok too. Really? Live yeah. sales? Kind of funny. But yeah, just if you only knew. So especially doing these Saturday lives, um, I usually, ordinarily when I'm painting a piece, I will paint it usually once, um, if not twice, before it actually becomes a pattern. Um, and then I paint one during the live, so I usually have three of everything. <laughs> so, and also, if you can only imagine. But yeah, I was 152 or 153 finished pieces that I took out of that one shelf. Lori Speltz has the online market spot for crafters and creators. She has live sales once a month. Wow, I'll have to check it out. I, yeah. There. Okay, so I've got a nice coat of matcha green on there. And we're going to shade this with a little bit of um, plantation pine. I just want to make sure this is good and dry. This is the fun part for me. I love this. It's because I get to use those neons. <laughs> I love my neons. Especially on Halloween pieces just fun so plantation pine we're going to shade the top of that liquid with a little float there and then in behind that eyeball and up against the teacup it's it's a little tight in there so don't beat yourself up if you're not getting it perfectly the first time oh i think we can help this lady what uh lillian van snick uh, I've been trying to find out what an e-pattern is. Can't seem to find out. I've been purchasing... Uh, Print patterns? Pattern packets from painters, which include colored photos and instructions sent by mail. I so badly want to paint the seahorse. Please help. Yeah. the An e-packet is quite simply a PDF. So it's an electronic file. Um and the nice thing about them is that they allow us to put more into them at a much lower cost. Um, so essentially what happens if you order an e-packet, you'll get an order confirmation and at the bottom of the page, there'll be a link to your download. So you can click on that and it'll open the file and then you can place it wherever you need to store it on your computer or you can print it immediately on your printer. So they are very functional. and considerably less expensive than buying print versions. The cost of printing these days is just astronomical. Speaking from experience. <laughs> so I'm going to put a shadow of that. <laughs> and having said that, if you're looking for that seahorse pattern as a print version, we can certainly do that for you. It's just not on the website yet, but it can be. We can do that very quickly. Yeah. There is, however, a small extra cost that goes along with it. Yeah, well, not... Be because we're shipping it. One, you're and shipping it, and two, the printing costs. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. But, yes, if you would prefer to have a printed version, we can absolutely do that for you. So, I've got that green in there. I just realized that my bubbles up there are not nicely opaque. Now, when I traced this on, I used my shape maker to trace those bubbles so that they're nice and round. Somebody asked me the other day how I got things so nice and round. Shape maker. I use a shape maker. She cheats. I cheat. <laughs> Can you draw a perfect circle? Nope. Nope. So. And I did the same thing with the eyeballs and anything that needs to be round or perfectly square or 
what have you. I, I use my shape makers. The shape makers are a great little tool. They improve the quality of your work with very little effort. So we're going to put a shadow. Uh, what printer do you recommend? Um, I use a brother laser printers. Um, I see two of them. Three. There's one under your desk. That's a cannon. That one's a cannon. Oh, okay. I love the print the the um, the brother. Printers are hard to come by right now. Yes. Very hard to come by right now. And, um, but I use the laser printer for a couple of different reasons. One, um, you can't beat the, the quality of the print. Two, you can't beat the quality of the color and the cost. Although your initial investment is high, you get a higher print load from a laser printer than you do from an inkjet. That's from my experience. Um, I've got my laser printer here, my big one, the color laser. And I can print 10,000 pages with that before I need to replace the toners. The downside is, is that when I replace my toners and when I replace all five of them, it costs $150. <laughs> That's the only downside. But on the upside, is I can also print, print 10,000 color pages. It's a very good printer. That was a new face or new name. J.A. Hyde. Oh, it's not new. No? No. I definitely don't have it on the wheel, so it's going on there. Yep. So... I've got the shading on the liquid and we're going to shade these bubbles. So I'm putting a float of plantation pine on the far right side of these bubbles, just like so. How fun, how fun. And I missed a leaf. Did you? I did. This one. I didn't miss it. I forgot to shade it. There we go. So we need to put some highlights on this liquid. We're going to do that with a little bit of warm white. Ooh. <laughs> that isn't bad. Some cartridges for ink jets are over $100 each. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is a... I buy my toners from 123ink. Uh, the toner cartridges so they're a lot less expensive but i also love the fact that i can print so much with them can we take a break for a spin we can i'm going to put a highlight on these bubbles first all right so a little float of warm white come in from the edge just a little bit just a sliver this is going to give it a bit more dimension tiny highlight on those bubbles and that same warm white I want to put a float on top of the liquid towards the back just a little and a little bit right here neatness doesn't count for this one it's just a little float you'll see why in a minute okay so Renee's going to switch this over and he is going to so my friend Sheila God love her <laughs> She's so good to me, honestly. Um, she was telling me about some uh, great packaging that she had picked up. Uh, very seasonal and highly decorative. And I and she thought that I would enjoy them. So she sent me some awesome, um, I don't know, what do you call them, mailers. They're phenomenal. So the door price is going out today, all wrapped in sugar skulls. They're super cute. Just love them. Hello, handsome hubby. Hello, hello. <laughs> and spin. 187 names. Nice. And the winner is... Miss Bursfield. Nice. I need my...
Where's my pen? I don't know. There's my pen. <laughs> so today's uh, giveaways, Mrs. Bursfield. Nice. <laughs> the, today's giveaways are uh, from Tombow. So we have Tombow drawing sets. So you're going to get a uh, Tombow professional pencil set plus some erasers and some other good stuff that are in there. And then uh, we have one that is a set of Tombow's uh, brights, I believe they're called. Um, beautiful dual markers. So you have that brush point on one end and the fine tip on the other end. Um, plus there's always some other goodies that we shove into those packages. So um, the value of those giveaways uh, for the drawing sets is about uh, $20 for the drawing sets and about 30, 25 to $30 for the uh, Tombow um, dual markers. So there's a gorgeous set, 10 pens in there. It's a really nice giveaway. It's a nice set of markers. And uh, spinning again. Are you? Yeah. And if you've got nothing else to do, <laughs> <laughs> hop on to uh, tombowusa.com. You're going to love what you find there. Go and check out a lot of their products. I carry a lot of them because one, the quality is exceptional. I, I have never been a fan of uh, products that will do. I prefer to buy a really good quality. Their uh, mechanical pencils are my favorite. I absolutely love the mechanical pencils. I'm a big fan of the uh, erasers. Robin Wilson has got one of those prize packs. And um, the uh, Tombow Mono Eraser. You're going to love that with the pen. I love mine. Yay! This is my mono eraser. I love these. They're great. You can actually make them into a point piece of sandpaper. For a controller. These are awesome erasers. Um, I also like their black, um, black soft eraser is fantastic, especially on delicate papers or on delicate painted surfaces. It's fabulous. Uh, so we have those. And, um, and then my other favorite lately is the drawing pens. Um, I tried them out because I wanted to see how they would work with a lot of the design work that I do. And they're fantastic. Uh, they're, and they love the point. The point is really durable. Most of them have a tendency to split or break down over time. These ones are really great. <laughs> so I've been really, really impressed with uh, Tombow's products for artists. Just phenomenal. So um, if you get a chance, go and check out their website at TombowUSA.com. And uh, if you're looking for their brush lettering uh, instructionals, just go to resources, hit that button. There's tons of downloads in there that you can use templates to teach you how to do br brush calligraphy using Tombow markers. They're fantastic. So, uh, so uh, Ms. Bursfield and Robin Wilson are the two winners. Yay! Um, I don't know if we have shipping information for either one. So, um, I'm pretty sure we have Robin Wilson's. Yeah. Uh, but either way, ladies, uh, just go to the little speech bubble on the homepage of my website. You might notice we made some changes to the homepage too. Um, <laughs> speech bubble. <laughs> speech bubble. There's a little speech bubble in the bottom right hand corner. Click on that and send us your shipping information so that we can get your goodies out to you on Monday. Mm -hmm. Oh, Faye Reed. Hi, Faye. <laughs> Sheila Landry, are we talking about me? <laughs> Back to painting. Back to painting. That is such a fun piece to paint. So we're going to, we've got the highlight on those bubbles. I'm going to finish that with a little highlight of warm white. And it's, for these guys, it's really simple. It's just a little dip dot. A dip do? A little dip dot. And, but I'm going on the upper left hand side of each one. Just like so. So there's our bubbles. And we're going to come down here and uh, shade our hubbles. So I've got a little bit of Bahama blue. And we're going to shade the white on the eyeballs with a little float of Bahama blue. This reminds me of, you know, Halloween. I love Halloween. Love watching the kids in their costumes. But 
I think what appeals to me the most about Halloween is watching everybody come up with these great ideas for decorating their front yard. We have, uh, I don't know if they have those in the States, um, Spirit Halloween, the stores. Oh, the that Spirit have, of Halloween. Spirit of Halloween. Yeah. Um, we, we actually have a franchise owner that just lives down yeah. the street. <laughs> oh, yeah. One of our neighbors uh, owns one of those stores, and his yard is a virtual playground <laughs> of Halloween stuff. It's a great. cornucopia. Of creepy, yeah. Um, his yard is just fabulous at Halloween. Halloween decorations. Yeah. I don't know if he's a franchise owner or if he is a... Um, uh, Manager. Like a, a district owner or something like it that. It could be. They're still considered a pop-up store. Yeah. I don't know, but he's got... His yard is phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> just has way Filled too much with everything. fun. Filled with everything. So, I, if you remember, I put a little float of warm white in there. Uh, I'm going to show you why. Because I wanted... I'm just waiting for these. Neons. This is one of, I think, one of my favorite things that Decorart makes. I love these neons. And I'm using thermal green for this. I just yep. love how this looks. And this is one of the reasons I put that little float of warm white in there is just to make this pop a little bit. I am missing like half the chat. For some reason, it's not uh, scrolling. So I'm going to put a float right where I put that float of warm white. I'm putting a float of that thermal green and it just pops. I love, love, love how that little bit of white just makes that thermal green come to life. Look at that. So zing. We've got zing. I love refresh. thermal green. Have to refresh the chat. There we go. So I look at how vivid that becomes. So I'm going to come down here because I want to put a little of that green in. I just don't want it to be quite so bright. So I'm just sort of pity patting a little of that thermal green right over that matcha green. I just love how it kind of looks toxic. <laughs> Which well, it should be. It should, be. <laughs> it should look toxic. Yeah, nothing you drink should ever be this color. It's not even a margarita. Kool-Aid. No, even Kool-Aid doesn't look like that. Yeah. Lime? Lime Kool-Aid? Lime Kool-Aid looks like that. It's not quite like that, that bright, is it? It looks that green, yeah. Yeah. Maybe Probably a little darker. shouldn't drink that either. <laughs> Probably not. I loved Kool-Aid. It's like the best summer refresher ever. Yeah. Still is. Hey, okay. soot. She going to steal my chair again? You okay? Oh, you're getting... You're old. Yeah. She's you gotta eat your food, ears. though. That's what I'm worried about. She's What's not that? eating. Yeah, not much. So, I love that. Love it. I love that it. I can dry it and then do it again. It gets a little bit brighter each time. Uh, Tracy, my husband Rich, won a whole set of the new decor colors at the SDP 50th anniversary awesome. celebration in Las Vegas. I did the happy dance. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Her, uh, Rich is the one that did the wreath. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, right on. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome sauce. Mountain Dew. Again, shouldn't drink it. Yeah. Mountain Dew has that kind of... That does look like Mountain Dew. Yeah. Except with eyeballs in it. With eyeballs in it. So you really shouldn't drink it. Yeah. So I've got a little bit of that purple iris. Ooh, what did I hit? Which is oddly appropriate. Because we're going to shade the iris of the eyeballs with purple iris. There's no dibs, Faye. <laughs> There's no dibs. No dibs there. Robin already tried. So a little bit of that purple on eyeballs. Mountain Dew is caustic. So is, most sodas are. Most sodas are. Yep. Oh. <laughs> 
way it's you <laughs> it's just you sound like me <laughs> <laughs> so little float gives us some shape to those eyeballs again with the drop in the brush good grief so I want to put a little bit of a highlight on the top of that eyeball so just using a little bit of warm white just on the the iris part of the eyeball I want to put just a little highlight up here just a little one not much just a little float there we go kind of creepy eyeballs floating in your drink so we're going to dry this we're going to add a little bit of texture to those eyeballs with um, just a few little lines radiating out from the center I'm going to use my black gel pen for this and it's just a few little lines coming off of the eyeball like so just makes these a little extra creepy it's Halloween it should be extra creepy and then we're going to put um, we need to put a small highlight on the black part of the eye just to give it a little bit of shape we're going to do that with some heavily thinned warm white don't want this too strong and it's just a C-shaped float that goes from upper left to the bottom center. Upper left to bottom center. Just a little stroke. Nothing fancy. And then we're going to use a dip dot for that final highlight. And I want to put it right on the edge of that pupil just like that so there is our eyeballs now I like to take my gel pen I'm going to detail a few things you can do this with paint if you prefer I just like the the ease of doing it with the pen I'm going to go around the outside edge of the iris. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can look a little sketchy. That's okay. And you do the same thing around the eyeball. Like so. I don't know. A lot of the time I think it's the imperfections of doing this that make it, um, give it character, give it some interest. I love it when things are quirky. I didn't see any Patrick in there. Patrick is on vacation. Oh, then I don't blame him. Yeah. Our friend Patrick is in south, uh, central south of France visiting his mom. Oh, good. Gotta yeah. see mom. So, on that little edge where the liquid joins the glass where it touches the glass we're going to put a little highlight in and I'm going to thin a little bit of warm white for that and if you find that the warm white is too bright take a little bit of that um, neon green and mix it with some white and this can be your highlight color so I'm going to pull a little bit along the edge of that liquid like so doesn't have to be perfect and then you're going to have some little dip dots like so coming up the glass <laughs> straight lines are for cartoons squigglies are for art yeah yep precisely and then on the back edge of that liquid on the top over on the left hand side we're going to put that same little line just like so easy peasy 
Now we have to start dry brushing our bottle, putting any highlights on our bottle. We'll do that with some warm white. <laughs> Fairy just noticed that she has a palette next to her name. <laughs> Miss Faye. It means you're part of the membership for a year. I didn't get enough paint on my brush. There we go. So we're going to highlight our bottle with a dry brush of warm white, just like so. <laughs> right on that blue. And you're going to come down to where that liquid joins. Right there. And I'm going to do that on the other side as well. And then on this side of the top of that bottle, that rim, and that highlight's going to come about around the corner and it's going to stop about midway. So just under his nose. I'm not having much luck. I think my brush just needs to be cleaned. So I'm going to use, there we go. I just switched over to my Mezzaluna because my point blender is in need of cleaning. There we go. I got, now I'm cooking with gas. Could not get my color to come off. There we are. So about the halfway point. Now with the liner or the rigger, you're going to add a light impact point on that highlight with just a stroke of warm white, like so. And I'm going to dry that. And now we need to have light on the back and the front of the bottle. So we're going to put a highlight right here. This would be the face, the part of the glass that is facing you. And then we're going to do the same thing, put a highlight on the back part of the glass and follow the curve of the bottle down to that point. Remember this little spot I put there? That's where your highlight is going to go. It's just a curve. So this one replicates the curve at the front and this one replicates the curve at the back. So now time to shade this bottle. Now I'm using a Schwaltem and I'm thinning it. I don't want to use it full strength. So we're going to shade under the lip of the bottle here and here and in behind those flowers in behind the cup and then underneath and behind this skull. Now I'm using heavily thinned asphaltum and I'm very carefully avoiding burying my highlight. Had I been thinking, I would have done this before. But apparently it's been that kind of a week. I went looking for my cell phone the other day using my cell phone as a flashlight. That's what kind of week it's been. In case you ever wonder if my thoughts of the day are just random or if they actually apply. <laughs> they do. A lot of the time they do. So you can deepen these floats on the skull if you find they're not quite dark enough. But look how fun he is. Look how fun. So little float underneath. Right there. I like it. 
So coming along quite nicely, I'm going to dry this. You can see those until now. What? Dad was texting me. Oh. I didn't see it until now. Oh, peppermint tea today. So good. So we have a little bit of finishing work to do on our flower here. Jeez, and I'm going to use a little bit of that neon green just because I can. And we're going to put some nice little dip dots in the center of our flower like so. I do love this neon green. It's just pops. How fun. Now I'm going to bring that neon green onto the leaves because I want to carry that color. I just I love neon green and it needs to go on these leaves. So a little float, just at the tip of the leaf. Just, you know, that vibrancy. I just love that vibrancy. So wherever you have green, don't be afraid to like grab some of those neons to put that in there. Especially when you're working on a black background, because these colors just pop off of that black background. And it's so fun, so bright, so lively. Look at that. It makes such a difference. Just that little touch of color at the tips of the leaves. So I actually got uh, our YouTube rep to send us a, a channel membership gifting beta application. Oh, okay. So we're eligible to participate in the beta if you want. However, after reading it, yeah. um, we need to have a membership channel or a channel membership tier of five dollars so the tier you know how we set okay. it up yeah yeah we have to have one that is at five dollars okay. to participate in the beta so we'd have to have another tier yeah uh, i'm not sure i want to do that so i'm going to use a little bit of thinned warm white to do our spider's web I've thinned it out quite a lot. I'm using a little bit of Joe Sonia's for that. Now, having said that, if you are not comfortable doing this fine lines or just don't feel that it's going to give you what you want, um, don't be afraid to use that white opaque pen. It'll work just fine. I'm a fan. I like the spider's web, just don't like spiders. If we could have one without the other, I'd be happy. But then God knows what kind of creature we'd get making these webs. So we'll stick with the spiders, but. Must be having power outages all over the place. Oh my goodness. Well, storms have a tendency to do that. We've gotten off lucky this year so far do you hold your breath when you make small strokes no <laughs> you have to breathe through them <laughs> um because the minute you do everything tightens up if you hold your breath and you start to shake and then your hand starts to shake so now i like to put a little dip dot of white in a few places on spider's webs um i just think it kind of reminds me of you know do or whatnot or dust who knows so there is our spider's web i like it 
So now um, we have to put down um, our border on this piece. Before you do the flames? Yes, so we have a template. So I'm using, and I cheat. I'm sorry, but I do. I'm going to zoom out here so they can see what you're so doing. So I'm going to use my one inch ruler. This is my stainless steel ruler. And I'm going to grab a pencil. There we go. And I'm just going to mark right here with a line where the width of that is. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. This is just the easiest way to create um, an outline on a surface by using this ruler so that if I have those two lines now I know where this side is. So I'm going to grab my gold pen and this is my gold line. And I like using this method because it's there's no fancy measuring involved. It's just a super simple way to put a border on. So I have my baseline. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to take my pencil. There. No real measuring involved. So now I know where I stop and I start. Very forgiving, and it's a very easy way. Now, had I been thinking, I'd have grabbed my 12-inch ruler to do this, but I did not think. <laughs> Someday the lights are on and nobody's home. This is the fun part, because it makes it easy to line everything up. Robin R are just popping in to say hi. Uh, I'm missing you guys today. I just got on the road a short time ago going to Georgia to see Dad. Nice. Go visit your dad. Can't think of a better reason to not miss. And you're going to Georgia. But it's, hopefully it's not storming. I hate to say I heard the storming. best peaches are from Georgia. Yes. I like fresh peaches. <laughs> you like peaches. Those sour peaches. I love fuzzy peaches. Fuzzy peaches. But only a few at a time. <laughs> so I have my gold border in place. I am going to dry this. And then I'm going to grab a dagger. I'm going to find one. Dagger? A dagger. You can do it with an angled shader, but yeah, I think I'm, I don't have a dagger in there. Okay. I'm going to give that a minute to dry. <gasps> Peach cheesecake? That's a thing? <laughs> it's a thing. Mm. They'd like to see a dagger brush. A dagger brush. I gotta find one. I know I probably have a couple of them. But, um, I have a striper's dagger. That's similar, but not what we're looking for. No? <laughs> <laughs> not quite. You can use an angled shader for this. I'll find one afterwards. So I'm gonna need a little bit of sunny day, which is yellow. Right here. And we are going to use it thin, which it's means that, it's not that faux squirrel that's sitting there. Where? 
just under your hand? I th right. No, I don't have a dagger out. Oh. If I had a dagger out, I would be using it. But or I don't is that have just one. a liner? That's a rigger. Oh, that's a rigger. No, I don't see a dagger striper anywhere. I know I have one. I just don't see it here at the moment. So, um, we're going to start with a little bit of thinned sunny day for this. And you're going to, when I say thinned, it's going to be thinned. You don't want this fully opaque. And it's a sloppy load. We don't want to. And you're going to create some flames. So you're going to do this. And that's your angled shader? This is done with an angled shader. It's a little faster doing it with a um, dagger striper. but And then inside the handle of the teacup, up to that border, we're going to put a little bit. So you can see that it sort of creates some flames back there. Just a basic shape. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Rolling it over, you can see how I'm rocking that brush back and forth. It just helps you create, you know, those little flames, those licking flames that sort of pop up in the background. And you can overlap them. Don't be afraid to overlap. And then make sure that you get a little bit of that color down onto that border, that little line at the horizon. Yeah, that's it. It's not the brand I wanted, but yes, that's it. <laughs> that one says sword. Yeah, this one's made in England. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, look at me go. <laughs> yeah, look at you go. <laughs> um, every brush company makes a dagger striper. Some call them a sword brush, um, but essentially it's the same thing. This one is a Rosemary and Company. Um, it's a 3 8 sword or dagger striper. Um, this one is a British company. This one was gifted to me by the manufacturer. Um, it's still got the sizing in it. Tells you I've never used it. Not this one, because I'm usually using the Dynasty version and I have the Dynasty version. But that's what it looks like when it's wet. And these are a phenomenal brush and they're great for doing this kind of thing because you can this one's a bit big, but you can lay it on its side and do these wonderful things with it. So I have some smaller ones that work really well, but this is what you're looking for. And they vary a little. Some will come to this really sharp point. Some are a little more blunt, but it's the, still the same type of brush. This is the type of thing that you would be used for doing pinstriping. This is just water, by the way. Don't panic. <laughs> so that's a beautiful brush but a bit bigger bigger than what we need so but that's what they look like so i'm going to dry this because i got water all over everything it's pretty close to what i use for a striping brush yep where is my striping brush it's there somewhere might be in the oh it's in the blue the little bin Remember the bin that's in der, under the table there? There's a basket full of stuff. Oh. Yeah. So I'm just going to dry that real quick. Because it is just water. Kind of like S-strokes? Yes. Exactly. So I've got that little bit of um, sunny day in there. It just looks like a loose flame back there. And if you repeat this a few times, you will get... Where did my brush go? <laughs> what were you using? I was using an angled shader. Now I can't find it. Oh, there it is. Hello. <laughs> Play a game of fire in the angled shader. Yeah. 
So this is just one or two layers. But don't be afraid to pop in a couple until you get, you know, some darks and lights, just like that. And this just kind of gives you the that look of flames in that background. So it you get variation if you look, you've got darks and lights and shadows and whatnot. And then once you get to that point, you are ready to start adding some of the other colors. And I'm going to come in there with a little bit of orange flame. I love that color. Orange flame. I can find it. Don't need a lot. And again, we're going to use this color in the same fashion. A little bit of brush paint on the brush, thin it out. And you're going to start going over some of the yellow. Orange flame is very opaque. Oh, no. Or is really. it very thin? It's very, yeah, I've heavily thinned it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're going to layer over top of that. Don't forget, you've got to get up on that black with that color. I like the orange. I'm curious to how you're going to get the blue in there. The blue? You're not adding any blue into your flames? No. Well, there's always blue in flames. You get the blue from the white on the black. Oh, okay. I get you now. <laughs> ah, <laughs> he's smart. Yeah. More than just a hat rack, son. <laughs> You've been doing this a while. You know what you're doing. <laughs> now, the fun part about doing this is that you keep going until your color is more opaque towards this bottom line here. So if you need to, you pull a little bit of color down at the bottom and let it come up. Whoops, too much. Wow, how did I do that? How are you doing? You doing things a little too heavy handed? Oh, now? I just I globbed into the paint. wasn't intentional, but. Yeah, we haven't even talked about what's for supper. We, I am doing a grilled pork tenderloin. Ooh. Fancy. It's going to be like a pinky up dinner or? No. No. It's. I'm doing it on the barbecue. Oh. <laughs> but it's a rosemary pork. Hmm. So rosemary, garlic, onions. All the good stuff. It's been marinating since yesterday. In that Perfect. herb blend. <laughs> mm, yum. Yep. So don't forget that little space behind the teacup, inside the handle. Make sure you get in there. So each time you put a layer on, you can see those flames build up. Oops. Jeez, what is with me? I'm getting so uh, heavy... I just got a little heavy. Yeah. Well, I still need. It's got to get quite opaque yet. So. So you just keep building up. I usually like four or five layers I find does the trick. But it's not going to be fully opaque just yet. Because. We're going to come in here with that neon. Ooh, I like it. Now, in reality, if this were a piece of realism, we would have flames in behind in here. But it is not realism, so <laughs> we're just going to go with it. 
So I've got a little bit of that torrid orange, they call it. I don't know who gets more excited about the neons, him or me. <laughs> this is a vibrant orange. You got to bring the palette into the shot. Yeah, because it'll take your retinas out. Yeah, this yeah. stuff is potent. Potent. Boom. Love this orange. <laughs> and we're going to layer it over top of this orange. And this is where that punch of color comes. Ooh, Hawaiian pulled pork sandwich is done on the crock pot. Ooh, yummy. Yum. That's another tomorrow we're putting on eight pounds of bacon in the smoke. Oh, well, oh, we're doing that tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So I have that neon orange and this is. Jeez. I love what this does for this. So right over top of where you've been, you're going to put in a few strokes of that torrid orange. And it's just like little S strokes of color over top. So don't worry about it, just layer it in. How fun is that? This is just such a great color. And the more you layer, the brighter those flames get. So don't be shy. Don't feel that you can't just pop color wherever you want it because you can. So nice and bright, especially when you put it over top of that orange flame. I just think that that is such a great color. So there is how you create some fun flames, just using some yellows and some oranges. I just love the heat of this. It's just such a fun piece. So I'm going to dry this. And you may notice that these flames are going to lighten a little bit as the paint dries, but don't be afraid to pop a little more in if you want it to be a little more vibrant. And I'm going to show you a little trick. Whenever you want that neon to really jump a little, take a little bit of thinned warm white or titanium white doesn't matter which just a little I'm going to put just a couple of little strokes in here like so just with a little bit of that warm white and I'll dry it and then I'm going to go over that with that torrid orange And those ones are just going to pop a little bit more. It's like that little bit of light. And there's your flames. Super easy. Now you can clean up edges and whatnot with a little bit of that. Um, I like to use that orange flame just to clean up edges. So there's a spot there along the handle that I don't think is very clean or very tidy. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that orange flame and I'm just going to float a little bit it right to the edge of that handle. And that takes care of, you know, any little areas that are just not quite as perhaps neat and tidy as you would like. Cleans things up very, very nicely. So there we go. Flames for days. So now we have some lettering to take care of. I 
do like that. So lettering, I am using a zero rigger. I'm going to zoom in on the lettering. I'm going to clean up my palette here because that's just tragic. <laughs> Pull my palette over here a little closer to me. And I'm going to use a little bit of, left the cap off too long. A little bit of matcha green. Linda Safranco's on Facebook today. Cool. We need a little bit of plantation pine. And we need our neon green. So those are the colors that we are using for our good grief. Move my. I got too much stuff over here. <laughs> there we go. Good lord. You good? I'm good. Yeah, I'm gonna move so. it over so they can see the palette a little bit more. So I'm thinning out a little bit of that matcha green. I'm using a little bit of the Joe Sonia's fast dry glaze in there. I want this paint to be very fluid on the brush. <laughs> and we're going to paint in our lettering using that zero rigger. And this is what that Joe Sonia's does for you. It Look at how smoothly that paint comes off that brush. So it makes life so much simpler. <laughs> Did we scare Linda away? There's our A. Oof. Oh, is there YouTube issues? Is that why she went over to the Facebook? I don't know. So, you put a little of that Joe Sonia's into that green paint and it flows off that brush so much easier. It does make life a little simpler. This is some beautiful pork tenderloin at, the, at uh, Costco last week and was on sale. So I thought I would marinate some for dinner tonight and then the rest I'm just going to freeze. But I finally got my hands on a whole pork belly last Thursday and I cut it down and I've had about eight pounds worth of pork belly marinating and curing and getting it ready for the smoker since last Friday. So I'm making bacon. Making bacon. And we're going to use apple. Applewood or maple, I'm not sure which. I tell you, it makes a difference when you get a little bit of that glaze in that brush and how smoothly that paint comes off and onto your surface. Oh, you're painting off screen. Am I? Yeah. Yay! <laughs> I'll try to move it up a bit too. There we go. I 
I do like this font. This one is, if I'm not mistaken, um, called Abracadabra. I could be mistaken, but I think it's Abracadabra. It's a very vintage, um, sort of a Victorian style font. I kind of like it. A klutz today, I'm knocking everything over. <laughs> Jessica says she's coming to our house for bacon. <laughs> Well, it has the uh, cure that I'm using is um, half a cup of maple syrup, about a quarter cup of uh, kosher coarse salt, and then I use a quarter cup of Himalayan, ground Himalayan pink salt. And... Then I use ground pepper, so it has some nice cracked pepper, not ground pepper, but cracked, cracked pepper, and some red chili flakes, and I put all of that into the Ziploc bag, split them all up so that they are sealed in there and have had a seven days to soak. And then <laughs> I'll take it out tonight and it'll get rinsed to take all the excess salt off the outside and then um, pat it dry and then we'll leave it in the fridge open until um, it gets dry on the outside uh, before it goes in the smoker. There's a term for that. I can't remember what it is offhand, but. It'll be nice and sticky dry on the outside and then it'll go in the smoker for seven hours. <laughs> I'm going to have to paint this twice because my daughter's going to take mine. <laughs> this is a fun piece to paint. It's very tongue in cheek. What do you mean he's up for adoption? Who? No. Look. Don't show me. Look. No. Oh, I want one. It's a alligator. Yes, it is. It's a furry velociraptor. <laughs> exactly. Now I want them. They don't chill out until they're like two years old. Yeah, you don't have that kind of time. <laughs> <laughs> and even then. <laughs> He's missing the tip of his ear. Aw. Faith. Now, I'm going to... I love This tiny lettering that's at the top... It's a, it's a challenge to paint that with a brush because it's very tiny. Mm. So I'm going to suggest that we use that white opaque pen. You're mean. They want to see the cute He's thing. mean. Oh my god. He's up for adoption. He's so cute though. <laughs> face. Look at him. Um, <laughs> it's a good thing we don't live anywhere near. Yeah, he's up for adoption in Texas, so go get him. Mm -hmm. And tell me if your house survives. 
Maligator. Maligator. I saw a video the other day of a mal, and I thought it was absolutely hilarious because it said everything you ever need to know about a maligator. Oh, no. They had bought their dogs one of those um, sprinkler pools. Okay, it's, yeah. They're shallow, and then they have like a little fountain type thing. Yeah. And they had, I don't know, probably... You know, a golden retriever and a lab running around in the yard and they were all wet and having a great time in it. And then the Maligator arrived. <laughs> and he's running around the yard with the pool in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty safe to say it would no longer hold water by the time he was done with it. Nope. He was running around the yard with it, still spraying water. But it was just priceless. I'll help with transport. Oh! I'll have an army. I could have an army of mal retrievers. Oh. And bring me all the mals. Oh. <laughs> all the puppies. All the puppies. Oh no, what's going on with Renee? What, Renee? I love... Those mouths are so freaking cute, but that one with him running around the pool, the yard with the <laughs> pool in his mouth, just says everything you ever need to know about a mouth. Yeah. yeah. Essentially. Yeah. But it was funny. What did I miss? I don't see anything from Renee on here. What, what did I miss? Renee Howard. Okay, I'm looking for it. Renee Howard. Uh, I love bacon, but none for me. I have stage 4 kidney disease. Oh, my. Oh. No nitrates. Yeah. Um, Very low salt intake. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. It's I love bacon. <laughs> <laughs> well, it will be the death of me. <laughs> it will be the death of me, I swear to God. Um the one thing I've discovered, I love bacon, but I prefer not to eat by itself. I prefer to cook with it. And if I'm going to cook with it, then I actually prefer using my homemade bacon. Yes. So for the time that it takes to make one, make a batch. Um, you're pretty much committing yourself to a week, if not a couple of days more. But in the end... <laughs> so worth it wolf blitzer loves bacon <laughs> that's sheila's cat wolf yeah, sheila's cat yeah loves bacon he is beautiful they're having a clear the shelter month <gasps> with half price adoption fees here in dfw north texas area dallas fort worth <sighs> No, you cannot fly to Dallas. <laughs> so I'm just tidying up a couple of little things, little lines that need to be dealt with. But I think we are there. Nice. So I, I like to make sure that things are nice and straight and crisp. I will take two kittens, please. <laughs> <laughs> Been eating my fair share of BLTs with fresh tomatoes. Mm. Yum. That would be a great idea for dinner one night this week. Everything has salt in it, even vegetables. Hard to stay under 1,200 milligrams per day. Yeah, I could understand. Yeah. Yeah, because everything has got salt in it. The only way to avoid that is to buy absolutely fresh vegetables. And even then, I bet it has salt in it. Well, processed food always has salt in it. But if you're buying fresh vegetables, like from a garden center, or you have to avoid salt and nitrates.
Put it into context. We eat one kimchi, you farly, by far exceeded <laughs> our daily intake of salt. Yeah. Just with one kimchi. So we, can you imagine? Great inflection. Just how I intended it. <laughs> Two kittens. Whoa. What? Heard on the news yesterday, a New Hampshire shelter has 4,000 beagles. Oh, yeah. That were rescued from a Virginia science lab. I read something about that. They'll be ready for adoption after their quarantine time. Yeah. Wow. Beagles. Really? They do have sensitive skin. That's probably why they use them. But still. That's a lot of beagles. You can barely find a beagle breeder anywhere, yet they've managed to find 4,000 of them. They're probably breeding them themselves. Yeah, probably. Puppy mills are horrible things. The worst ones are the legal puppy mills. Yeah. They just call them something different. They call them internal breeding programs or... It's a puppy mill. Yeah. Science lab beagles. Hmm. I wonder if they'd even be socialized. Probably not. They're sending the beagles off to different shelters and rescues throughout the U.S. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so I got my lettering done. And this is the fun part. So we're going to shade these just a little bit at the bottom with a little float. Ashfaltum? Of no. What? Did you, did, did you use any ashfaltum today? I did. On all of the white and on the bottle. Okay. Have I, we met? I was I was curious. I wasn't here for some of that, so. So I'm just putting a little float at the bottom of these letters with a little bit of that plantation pine. And you're bringing about one quarter of the way up. Well, maybe one third. But not far. You don't need to do it far. Half would be a little too far, I think. It's not a neat and tidy float. Don't beat yourself up over it. It's just to get a little darkness at the base of this letter. So if you go over onto the black, don't don't worry about it. Come ça. Super simple. There is your darker value at the base of those letters. And that's it. That's it for your shading. Super simple. And now comes the fun part. This is where you're going to take your angle shader and some of that neon green. Dang. Because I love neon green. I love neons. Neons are awesome. And we're going to put a little of that neon green at the top of the letters. That's your highlight color. Just a little bit of it at the top of the letters. Again, don't panic. Doesn't have to be perfect. We just want a little bit at the top. Yes, I do believe I should have that puppy. <laughs> Renee used to train Malinois. Belgian Malinois, per the Belgian sheepdog family. I have never worked with a Tavarian, even though it's just a long haired version of Chaos. <laughs> and I already have a name picked out for my Malinois. Do you really? Yes. What is it? If it's a boy, his name is Chaos. And if it's but a girl, spelt with a K. Uh huh. And if it's 
a girl. There's two. <laughs> there's two names. <laughs> Boy Chaos. Yep. Um. Girl, it's uh, Greek goddess. Aphrodite. Aphrodite. <laughs> and the, uh, the third one is bitch. Nice. Because <laughs> that's what they turn into. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's what they are. <laughs> that's what so they are. I'm just using that white gel pen to sketch in that upper lettering. If you prefer, use the liner. I'm just feeling particularly lazy today. So I'm using the white pen. Does anyone else think that the eyes look like SpongeBob eyes? They kind of do. Yes, I guess they do. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't really think of it. <laughs> Didn't come to mind until now. Nope. But what has been seen cannot be unseen. <laughs> How would Miss Dot feel about a new puppy in the house? She'd be fine with it. Yeah. She'll set her own boundaries with the pup. Yeah. Uh, it's you let. The older dog set their boundaries. Yep. And the younger pup will learn. Mm hmm I can't do that. The old one won't let me. Mm. Young pups know their place in the universe. There is a downside with um, Malinois, though. I have a Dutchie. They're pretty much just slower versions <laughs> of <laughs> Malinois. Yeah, a slower version <laughs> of a Mal. <laughs> Until uh, well, you would think that until you've seen Dot at her finest. Yeah, and then at her like, finest, even in the wheelchair, she's still great. Well, but even in the wheelchair, I watched her run to go see <laughs> the neighbor the other day. Yeah. I'd have been checking my drawers if I'd seen that coming at me, wheelchair or not. Um, Tracy, if you use a brush-on sealer, would the gel pen smear? I. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. I haven't had that problem. However, um, I also take everything out to the garage and give it a spray of matte spray before I varnish anything. It's just a habit I developed because I use so many different mediums that just avoids any problems for me. So I haven't had that problem. But then again, I have used my matte spray. So... No, Renee, please, no. <laughs> is it is it one of the female names? Chaos. Oh, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. I'd lean towards Aphrodite. But it's a little long. I think chaos works for both males or females. Yeah, it could. Yeah. Chaos spelt with a K for a male. Mm-hmm. And spelt with a C for female. So, I, again, I'm just using my gel pen to put in the crossbars on this web. I just think this is fun. And again, I'm going to take a little bit of warm white get it out of the oh jeez and I like little dip dots of white I just find it makes the web look a little more I don't know reflective I have a little bit of weight psycho with an s <laughs> there you go I like it psycho <laughs> that would give people pause wouldn't it <laughs> it fits the Malinois breed. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Psycho. S Y C O. Yep. Psycho. So I'm drawing everything. I'm happy with this. I just don't like that spider's web in the corner. I think it needs to come down here. He's okay. 
That's the thing about spider's webs. They can be uh, all wonky if you want them to be. There we go. That works. Spider's web. Um, Aries. Ooh, I like that too. Um, Merc. 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 <laughs> I miss Mark. <laughs> Mark's a dumb Malinois, but he's... Uh, he was a goofy dog. He was funny. So I have a couple of little things I want to clean up. And I tend to do this quite a bit. Because although I do not expect perfection, certain things bug me. This is one of them where a float came up over top of the edge of the bottle. I don't like that. So I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. Give it a crisper edge. See, things like that irk me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to zoom out. And there we go. Boom. Flip it. That is... Oleander tea. Oleander tea. It's a fun piece. Merck is Dot's brother. Yeah. Like genetic brother. Yeah. Littermate. Littermate. Aries was a cane corso that I worked with at the dog park. <laughs> had a, a toad problem. Yeah. There we go. Very possessive over his toys. I like this. So that is only under tea. Ooh. That's a fun piece to paint. Um, I do have. I don't know if you've been looking on the website, but if you go to the homepage, um, I've rebuilt the the homepage of the website a little bit. We have the current live class, which is up. Directly underneath that is what's coming up next, and then directly underneath that is the coming soon. So if you want to have a look at what we're doing next weekend, we are. Well, I'm not. You are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to walk on a beach somewhere. <laughs> You're uh, painting. <laughs> You're painting. Homework. <laughs> <laughs> um, the piece that we're doing is called Baking Spirits Bright. The video will be up uh, next Saturday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Same time as usual. You'll be able to access the video. The pattern is on the website if you want to do it. And we've put all of the surfaces for this project on sale. So they're... Uh, they're usually seven dollars and now at five so you'll be able to get those off of the website and um, as I said the pattern is up there you do have a new coupon code because you guys are are watching on the YouTube channel I've given you a new coupon code it's called surface sale s-u-r-f-a-s-e sale just surface sale type that in give you an automatic discount on everything in the surfaces so if you're ordering those jumbo tags that i'm so overstocked on i'm going to change the price on those today so um <laughs> keep your eyes peeled for that and um everything else has been restocked so all of our surfaces have been really well stocked i've got a project coming up on um artfully connected on the 27th of september um, at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are painting It's Pumpkin Spice Season. And it's a fun piece. It's got a nifty background and uh, some fun colors in it for the fall. It's a very autumnal piece, of course. Uh, so check that out. It'll be posted on my uh, Facebook page. It is posted on my website. So have a look at that. Surfaces, again, we have all of them. And uh, we've put together a nice little kit for that project. So... Phone what stands, else? question mark? Phone stands. Yes, I got phone stands ordered. They should be in this week. Um, we sold out of a pile of them. I've also got a couple of new projects coming up using phone stands. And I got a new phone stand. A cat named Prozac? Prozac. Good Is he name. super mellow? <laughs> 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 ordered my pumpkin kit already? Yep. Awesome. Then all of those have been shipped out this week. So, yeah. So it's going to be a fun one, pumpkin spice thing. So go and check out the website because I've added a bunch of new stuff there, um, some fun projects, and uh, we'll have a new printable for you this week too. So I've been playing with skulls. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I'm playing with skulls. 
So I'm excited about this one. I've got a sugar skull one coming. Nice. And uh, have a look at the coming soon because I got a fun Halloween project coming up for uh, October. I'm excited about that one. It's going to be fun. <laughs> It'll be in October. Show your new phone stand, says Deb. Oh, yes. My new phone stands. Where did I put it? No. It's not them? I don't know where I put it. <gasps> Gasp. I got coffin-shaped phone stands. Coffin? <laughs> what? <laughs> They're flipping awesome. Where are they? I'm not sure. Are they somewhere? Uh, They're we gotta find probably them. in my pile we over there. We can't leave until we show those. Yeah, they're really cool. But it's a phone stand shaped like a coffin. It's awesome. So I've got a couple of projects coming up with that. Where is it? I don't know. I forget where I put them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hang on. I might have put them down here. Yeah, I did. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I reorganized. Couldn't remember where I put things. But these are flipping awesome. You're going to see them. Deb has has these up on her website i can't wait to do this look how cute look how cute is that that coffin shaped phone stand and deb's got two really cute designs for this phone stand they are so cute so i don't know if that pattern is up on her website but they're freaking adorable so yeah so this is our new toy the coffin shaped phone stand so i'm excited about that I got a whole bunch of, of new stuff. <laughs> oh, got a really cool. Um, I can show you this. <laughs> this is so cool. I was so excited. This is the Victorian um, frame. Look how pretty this is. I'm Cute. thinking a skull needs to go in there. For Halloween. Anyway, so we've got these in. Voodoo bunch of stuff bear? from SRT. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff maybe in there. Maybe a voodoo teddy bear? And maybe a voodoo teddy bear. <laughs> oh, I got a bunch of cool stuff. So that is that. Um, yeah, we got to spin a wheel. We still again. have a wheel to spin, so. There we go. Recycle my electronics. Okay. <laughs> is that the ad for this week yep uh everybody cross your fingers <laughs> Wee. <laughs> do, 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 do. I've, I've been getting updates from miss sheila and her newest designs i cannot wait till she launches and people are going to lose their minds they're amazing linda morgan linda morgan Linda, I don't know if we have your shipping information, so please go to the website on the homepage, lower right-hand corner, little speech bubble. Click on that and uh, send us your shipping information so we can send you out your goodies. Um, Linda is getting a set of pencils or a set of uh, Tombow markers. I'm not sure which. <laughs> but uh, One of them. One of them. <laughs> <laughs> We've got goodies. So uh, join us. Well, not us. Uh, next Saturday, we are not live. No. Um, on the uh, 27th, I'm taking a day off, basically a weekend off, to go find some uh, salt water to splash in, walk a beach, pick some sea glass, just have a nice relaxing time. So that's what I'm planning to do next weekend. But I didn't forget about you. Um, we did a project, created a project for you, and then shot video. And so that will be up on uh, next Saturday afternoon at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. You'll be able to access that video. The project is Baking Spirits Bright. It's super easy, lots of fun. And you notice Bob's in the corner. Uh, <laughs> that, that's Paul. It's Paul? Yeah, Bob's got white eyes. Oh, that's right too. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's Robert. Bob's, <laughs> Bob's cousin. Bob's cousin. <laughs> Or little brother, I don't know which. <laughs> anyway, so the uh, the surfaces are available on the website. We did put them on sale, so you'll be able to get them inexpensively. And uh, they are really a lot of fun to paint. So check them out and uh, come back next Saturday and watch the video. We'd love to see your finished project. So don't be shy. Post them on the Tracy Morrow Live Facebook page or share them in the community tab on the YouTube channel. Either one, we would love to see what you do with the stuff that we paint with you every Saturday. And uh, having said 
all of that. Thanks so much for joining us every Saturday, and I will see you again soon. In the meantime, stay safe. Mwah. Love ya. Bye, puppy. <laughs> Bye, puppy. <laughs> <laughs>